Hey everybody, Mark from Northeast Bass Fishing. How you doing? Uh, I want to do a, a video here. We've been on the channel, a, a lot of the guys, we've been talking about jig fishing and trailers and and how I like to rig things. So I thought I'd just do a quick, hopefully quick video here on um, how I put some just jig heads together with the skirts and the rattles and everything and how I just take, you know, the skirt, the, uh, the trailers I like to use and how I rig them on there. So let me just start with, you guys have watched my last video. You know that I just got some of the Queen Tackle jigs. And like when I get a jig like this, a store-bought jig that's already put together, it's already got the skirt on. The only thing that the Queen Tackle jigs, and this is your Arky, you know, style head, half ounce jig. I think this is the camo color. Yeah. So half ounce, flipping and pitching jig, camo color. The only thing I do to these jigs is I put a rattle on because I like a rattle on my jigs. I always use a rattle. And most jigs are gonna come with that little keeper there for your soft plastic, and whatever trailer you're gonna use. I just use that with one of these. And this is just a rattle collar. <clears throat> you know, little Mickey Mouse ears I get from Lure Parts Online. I like the ones from Lure Parts because they're, they're a little more sturdy. They don't tear as easy. So they do last a, a while. And I'll just thread that on over the shank of the hook and I just pop it over that that bait keeper and then I've still got a, a little bit of that bait keeper on there for when I'm using a plastic trailer so now all I have to do is pop in the rattles now with this a color like this I mean I could use anything I have a lot of different color rattles I've got like blue ones I've got red ones I've got some chartreuse ones I'll throw in there sometimes I'm not always looking to so-called, you know, you know, match the skirt on the rattle. Sometimes I think a rattle with maybe a different color might, might, you know, attract the fish a little more. So, you know, I could throw, I just happen to have some orange ones out. I could throw them on, but just for this one, I'm going to throw a couple of red ones on there. And a lot of times I'll just use the clear ones I have or black ones. I don't think it matters that much. I just kind of mix it up. So all you do is take that rattle and just pop it in those little Mickey Mouse ears. Now sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes those will those will those will tear on you if you're if, if you know. But it doesn't happen to me much with these ones especially. Sometimes it happens. You know, I'll just put a new one on. Sometimes if I just I'll just leave one rattle on for a while. So there you go. So now I have rattles on that jig and a little red in there. Never hurts. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, <laughs> hear that very well, but uh, there you go. So now that's that's pretty much the only thing that that jig is ready to go. Now, as far as trailers go, most of the time, and maybe not quite as much as in the past, probably seventy-five percent of the time, I like to throw pork. Now, for you guys who don't want to use pork, it's just it's a pain, it's messy, it dries out. I get it. But especially early in the season, or when that water is colder, really, if you have not tried using a pork trailer, I highly suggest you give it a try. Pork has always been the best trailer for me for getting bites, for fish holding on, for fish biting in cold water. And just the action of that pork in the water is so much more lifelike than any plastic you're going to use um, as a trailer. So if I was going to put a pork trailer on here, if the first thing you want to do is you always want to add a piece of worm of some kind, whatever it is. What I do is if I have torn up worms, torn up soft plastics, I just chop them up and keep little pieces of them in, the, in, a, in a plastic bag and leave them on the boat because I want to put that piece of plastic over here that's going to cover a little bit of that, just about up to the end of those rattles of that hook, uh, that hook so that the pork isn't flopping around back there. So just for this video, Power bait is a great, um, and I've used Maxent a lot there, worms, some of the generals. Now, like for a black 10-inch power worm like this, I'm just going to cut off about three sections of it. And maybe four. I'm just going to cut off about four sections of that 10-inch power worm. So now I've got a, <coughs> excuse me, about a nine and a half inch power worm. Put it back in there. And I've got... In the drawers over there, I've got bags of just chopped up, and I always leave one in the boat. 
so when I'm you know throwing pork I have something to put on the hook so now what I want to do get the skirt out of the way if I'm gonna put pork on here I'm gonna just take that that little piece of power worm and just thread it over the hook right there so now when I put that pork on there it's not gonna go all the way down it's not gonna get wrapped around it's not gonna flop upside down it's gonna stay straight and swim much better so just to, you guys know I have the old super pork these are old containers from back in the day you know I've got a ton of them this one is a dark brown red this is one of a brown green frogs so I'll use this brown green one I'm gonna try to not make a mess with these Ugh. I'll try not to make a mess here. I'm gonna actually grab a paper towel so I can dry off my fingers after I'm done with this. So here's your, you know, old piece of super pork, or you know, you guys have an Uncle Josh, any of the new porks that are out that you're using. Pork has kind of made a comeback a little bit. Um, there's your the regular pork frog. And if I throw, if I can find the jig, oh here he is. When I throw that, put that. Put it on that jig i can just kind of just go right over this actually i must have used this one it's already got a hole in it so now with that worm there that pork is not going to go all the way up here it's not going to flop all the way down to the end it's just going to sit on the end there and now it'll swim nicely in the water throw a little uh cb's hog sauce on it there get it all stinking like garlic i think this is a garlic one yeah sweet and sassy garlic gel i love scent Whatever scent you guys like to use, you want to throw bait fuel on there, whatever. Bang, you know, garlic scent is great. Whatever one you like is a good one. The Mega Strike is great, you know, any one you want. But now with that worm on there, that pork's not gonna go any further than that. But when this jig is going across the bottom and I'm swimming it, that those, those two legs on that pork front are really gonna start moving in the water. So that's my number one. And what I like about super pork is it comes off the hookies. The Uncle Josh used to have that, that hard spot on it where it was a pain in the neck to, to get it back off again. But that's it. If you're going to use pork, and if you have not tried it, I suggest you at least give it a Get one jar, give it a try, especially in those cold water months. You will find that you will get more bites. And what I do, you know, if, you know, guys say, well, Mark, it dries out when it sits on the boat. It will. Yeah, if you leave it out in the sun and you're not... What I do is I just... Take my line, let it out just a little bit so that, that that jig and that pork is just hanging over the boat in the water and uh, keeps it keeps it uh, from, from drying out on me. If you're fishing from the bank, just leave, leave your pork right in the right in the shoreline there in the water. Keep it from uh, drying out on you. But half ounce jig, jig and pig with the pork on there. Now, if I'm going to use a soft plastic trailer, you guys have that have followed my channel, we've talked a lot about plastic trailers you know I love and I've been stocking up on the uh, the pig uh, claw trailer from uh, Lake Fork the discontinued one that they still have on tackle warehouse you can still get them this is a two and a half inch size this is a three and a half inch size so if I was gonna if I'm gonna put this on do not do not just take your plastic trailer and do that it's gonna flop around, it's gonna move around. That's not the best way to thread it on there. Now, technically, if you left that worm on there, you could probably do it that way. But if I'm gonna use these plastic trailers, this is how I, I just thread them right on. Now, this is the three and a half inch size. It's that pumpkin with those chartreuse claws. So I'm just gonna go right to the middle of the bait. And these are thin, but you can just run it along get to like where the snout of the uh, trailer is pop the hook through and then just cinch it down and this has a little bit of that bait keeper on there too I kind of get it down to there rattles will sit right behind it so now I've got those claws are perfectly right coming right out the end of that skirt and that's with a three and a half inch size so if you guys are wondering um, one of my subscribers, we were talking about the difference between a half ounce, or I'm sorry, three, three and a half ounce, three and a half inch size of this bait and a two and a half inch size. So here's what it looks like with the three and a half. This is a half ounce jig. That's with the three and a half inch, uh, the Lake Fork Pig Claw trailer. Looks good. I usually start with the bigger size and see how they're eating it. 
I have not noticed that they don't like the three and a half inch size. <laughs> so they, they, it works great. I will always go for the bigger trailer. Whew, it's got that garlic smell too, which is awesome. Now, if you want to use the two and a half inch size, I'll show you what that looks like. So here's the two and a half. I think this is that Christmas tree color from, uh, from Lake Fork. Let's see how that two and a half inch size, I, I did it with that other one in that other video, so I'm sure it'll look fine. But just to show you how, just thread it straight on. Get to the end of the bait there and pop the hook through. Now, obviously with the plastic, you don't have to worry about it drying out or anything like that. But here now it's just a little more compact. So if you want a more compact jig, there's that two and a half inch size. So just decide what you like. I try both. Most of the time I'm using the three and a half inch size because I just like a bigger bait, like a little more bulk. And I don't really think they're that much of a difference. But that fits great too. They're both fine. Just depends on, you know, see what the fish want. Maybe they like it more compact. But like I said, there's that two and a half. Now, the other plastic trailer that I use very often, which is, you know, I, you know, the Lake Fork one is, 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 is 1A and this one is 1B or, or vice versa, depending on what they're eating. Recent years, I've used a lot of the, the uh, Power Team Lures, Crow Hors d'Oeuvre. This is a great, great jig trailer. And on, you can throw it on a Ned Rig, too. Just saying. But um, this I just thread on the same way. If you've never tried these before, this is a great, that, that three and a half inch uh, Crow Hors d'Oeuvre Power Team Lures, awesome trailer. And this is that kitchen sink color, which I love, which is really like a watermelon candy. This one I've obviously used because it has a hole in it. This should cinch on real good. And just cinch it down your hook. Pop it out. Always keep it. I always try to keep it in the middle. You don't want it to look too crooked. Not that I don't think the fish care that much. But that, everybody, is a great, great jig trailer. I'm using either this one or this one. You know, whether it's the, three, the two and a half inch size or the three and a half inch size. This is the three and a half inch, which is the same as the Crow Hors d'Oeuvre. It's just a little thinner bait, obviously. This is more of that chunk style. This is more of just that crawfish style. But either one of these are great, great jig trailers. I like them both. I've caught a ton of fish on both of them. Last year, I started using these a lot more just because I started, you know, I, I saw that Tackle Warehouse had some, so I've been stocking up and wanted to try them, and fish love them. It's a great trailer. Now, if you want something here that's maybe, that's got, you know, not such big, appendages such big claws this is great too but either one of them you can't go wrong you can't go wrong so now i've got my half ounce jig i've got rattles and i've got my trailer and that's a store-bought jig so the only thing i've done is add rattles and just put my trailer on you ready to fish half ounce jig now i'm just gonna you know I don't have to take you know, too long here, but I'm just gonna show you how I take a jig and make it from scratch. Now, I'm not talking about pouring <laughs> pouring jigs or anything like that, but I've been buying, and I know you guys have seen other videos, I buy these Bass Tech jigs from Tackle Warehouse, and there's their website, just tungstenjigs.com. You know, as I've said many times, now that I live in a no-lead state, I'm trying, you know, I'm using more tungsten in the last few years. So if I, I just buy, like I've got, Two bags of the brown ones. I think these are all half ounces. I used to throw three eighths a lot, but in the last few years I've thrown more half ounce. And this green pumpkin, I believe, is a half ounce, and this black one is a half ounce. Yeah, they, so these are all half ounce jigs. So here's a here's one of the brown uh, Aztec tungsten jig heads at a half ounce. So when I get these, and now that I've got I got twelve of them here, I'll make a few jigs for the season. Put in my jig box and here it's your you know your typical arky style tungsten jig head got your weed guard now the weed guard is heavier on this one than it is on the uh, let's say that queen tackle but um i haven't really found a need to really trim my uh, my weed guards down much lately i haven't had any problem with you know with hookups or losing fish so nice wide gap hook very strong hook half ounce tungsten now i love this combination a brown jig 
<coughs> me, with this brown, you know, skirt with that like gold flake in there with the orange on the ends. To me, this is one of my favorite colors. I'm not throwing that watermelon candy. I'm, I'm throwing this or usually I have both of them tied on and I'm, I'm switching off. Now, you got your jig, you got your skirt. Now, these are skirts are already, you know, pre-tied. They've already got the, the skirt strap on them. They're ready to go right out of the pack. I've got some like here from Beast Coast. They have some great colors. Uh, let's see. Some of these from DNL Tackle, some different crawl colors that I've gotten. My buddy Joey told me about. I've been trying out. But this brown and orange is, is a great, great combo. Very crawfish-like. I get bit everywhere I go with this. And when you get your skirts, when they're already pre-tied like this, you always want to go with the long end first. And I just aim for like the middle of the, the skirt material and the strap. And just go right along and bring it up and pop it over. Now here you've got, on this you've got your keeper for your soft plastic, but you want to get over that up all the way up to the top as much to the head of the uh, jig that you can get and just keep going and it'll slowly get up there and you're good to go now what I do is uh, I'll just say I always call it just combing out the jig the, the skirt I'll just kind of straighten all the strands out get everything straight because they do get sometimes get a little tangled under there don't pull them too hard you don't want to tear them off I mean, if you do lose one strand or a few uh, couples, not really the end of the world. But see, you'll, you'll know once you do it a few times, you know when everything is straight the way you like it. Sometimes it gets wrapped around the other side of the jig head. Just easily pull it out and it'll all pop into place. And so now you've got a nice full skirt and then I'll flop it over and then just kind of straighten everything out here, making sure everything's straight. There's no areas where it's there's no skirt. Kind of straighten everything out. Looks good. So now I've got a half ounce jig and I've got a skirt. I'm almost there. This is almost ready to go in the water. I love that. I love that skirt color. So everything looks good. Now flip it over. And then I'm gonna put my, my uh, rattle strap on there. One of those ones I showed you for, little Mickey Mouse ears. I'm gonna pop that over, up the hook. Ready to go. Now I'm gonna use these orange ones here since the theme of this jig is an orange, is orange and brown. So I'm gonna pop those on. And as I said, I don't think, if you just have black ones, or it doesn't matter. I have a lot of different colors. So I like to kind of mess around with different if I can get this one on. That's what's good about this rattle uh, strap is it's the plastic is a little <laughs> stronger, so it doesn't tear, but it is harder to get the chick in. But it's like anything else. The more you do it, you can hammer. So now I've got my rattles in. I'm ready to go. All this jig needs is a trailer, and it's ready to go. I've got the jig head I want, I've got the skirt I want, I've got the rattles I want. And you can, I, I think you'll save money because, you know, jigs are expensive nowadays. Getting a pack of tungsten jigs, three heads for, I don't even know what they are on, you know, eight or nine bucks, get yourself a few skirts. You can make a lot of jigs for what it would cost you for one or two jigs. Now I'm going to use, now what, I'm trying to think of what would be a good match for this. Let's see. This is actually a craw hors d'oeuvre in the natural color, which matches this one really good. Ouch. I'll show you what that looks like on there. And remember, just, just thread it right up the hook, stay in the middle of the trailer until you get to right around. Most trailers have like little eyes on them. I kind of just go like run a, you know, kind of aim between the eyes, set, so to speak until I get it up there and pop it out. 
try to keep it straight. It, it does tend to want to turn on you as you're threading it through, but you'll get the hang of it the more you do it. Get that trailer on there. And that's perfect because it's got like that orange belly. So there is my trailer. That is a fish catcher right there. Matches perfectly. Everything looks good. Very crayfish-like. You're ready to go. And the power team, the power team crawler d'oeuvre has a garlic smell. So you've already got the garlic smell in there. You can even throw a little more on, but you can see how it's nice and straight. Everything's nice and straight. And there you go. And that's it. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. And like I said, it's like anything else. The more you do it, the better at it you get. And I think this is a, a way to really get the jig skirt you want, the colors you want, the trailer you want, everything, the rattles, whether you want rattles or not. I prefer rattles. Some people don't. I always put rattles on, always. I actually keep rattles, you know, actually I have rattles in the boat, so if one falls off or I break a, a rattle strap, I can replace it. Usually I just steal it from another jig if I'm catching it on one particular jig color. That's it, I mean, that jig is ready to fish. And it's a half ounce tungsten jig from uh, Bass Tech. Ready to go, ready to go. So maybe I'll show you guys one more take one of these green pumpkin ones I'll show you one more half ounce green pumpkin tungsten jig use one of these dnl trip dnl uh... so same jig head just a uh, green pumpkin and let's see it's a really cool looking color here i have all these dnl ones i took out of the bag and then they're all falling around everywhere and i kind of like this one right here that's a different Lots of cool different uh, skirt colors in there. Long side first. Thread it through. Get it to the top of the jig. Now this jig, this skirt kind of got pushed to one side, so I'm going to fan it out so it covers the whole jig. And sometimes you just kind of twist them around on there, they straighten themselves out. Flop it over, and you can see how when I flop it over, how all the skirt material is like over here. So just kind of fan it out. The smirt, skirt material, when they put them on, sometimes they'll, they'll stick together along where the uh, along where the strap is. So I kind of just spread it out. As I always say, comb out the jig. You don't want any area where there's really no skirt hanging. Flop it back over, just see how everything looks. Looks good. It's a nice looking, nice looking skirt there from DNL Tackle. I forget which one they call that, but you guys are looking at them. Just look on DNL Tech on their website, and you'll see it. It might be the Cumberland Crow. I forget what this one is. But great color. That's a nice-looking jig, ready to go. Flop it over. Make sure everything looks good. Oh, I just pulled. See, I pulled one off. <laughs> Doesn't matter. There's a lot of strands on there. It does happen. You're going to lose some when you start catching fish anyway. Take my rattle strap. Ouch. Don't get the hook in your finger. Pull that down, pop it along there, and I'll just, uh, I'll throw a couple of these orange ones on since I have them out. Those orange rattles on there. Oops. Ooh. Actually matches pretty good with the orange. So, I've got my skirt. I've got my half ounce green pumpkin jig. I've got my orange. Actually, that orange looks pretty good on there. Got my rattles. My skirt's ready to go. And I'm going to use the big three and a half inch with a short tool. I think that'll look cool on there. And you could just, you can do all sorts of different color patterns. Whatever you want to do, 
If you've got a color that works good in your lake or where you fish, you know, there's no limit to what you can what you can try. But just thread that on there, that soft plastic trailer. And that's a three and a half inch one. So that's pretty awesome looking right there. That's a great jig combo ready to go. Half ounce with that little extra bulk, you got probably almost a little more than half an ounce there. Throw this around the lay downs and the weed lines and the rocks, you will catch some bass. So that guys, that's it. I mean, I've got 11, 12 other jigs here, 10 other jigs here to do. I don't think you wanna see a five hour video of me fixing up 10 jigs. I don't even know if I really need that many to fill my, my jig box up, but that's it. So that's how I do it. It's, it's, it, it's fun to do, especially if you're you know a tackle nerd like I am. It's fun to make up different jig combos and skirt combos. Um, I do have the other video that I did a, a month or a few months ago that Jig Fishing 101. Excuse me, I'll put the link to that. So you guys, if I even go deeper into, you know, making the skirts from scratch and putting everything together and the rods and the reels and the line and all that stuff. So I'll put a link to that video if you guys are new to my channel and you haven't seen it. But, you know, I, I've said it many times, I love jig fishing. It's one of my, it's, it's, it is my favorite way to catch bass. There's lots of ways to catch them, but this is my favorite way. Flipping and pitching jigs in heavy cover is, is my, if I could just do that, I'd be a happy camper. I'd be a happy camper. But that's it. So there's, there's two jigs to go in the, and I'll probably pull the, pull the trailers off when I put the jigs away in the, in the, in the jig box, but, but that's it. So I'll put some links um, in the description of this video, guys, just some of the skirts and some of the trailers that I use. And if you're interested in doing it yourself you can uh, can uh, can check it out and if anybody you know is doing it has any questions for me just put them in the comments and i'll answer them the best i can if there's something that i did that you didn't really see clearly maybe my hands weren't upright you know just let me i can always do another quickie and uh, show it to you but it's 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 a lot of fun if you love jig fishing it's 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 really fun to make your own jig put all the components together and then go catch bass when I did it the first time, I was hooked. I was hooked. You know, I do buy, you know, I do buy some, you know, some Queen Tackle jigs because I like their tungsten jigs. I do buy um, the Beast Coast jigs. I like their jigs. But that's pretty much, when I think about it, that's it. Other than these, you know, you know, these Bass Techs, as far as store-bought jigs, I don't buy a lot anymore. I, most of the time I'm making my own because I want to have the skirt color combos that I want, that I like. And there's, you know, there's so many different cool options out there. This is just a few. You guys, if you watch that other jig video, I mean, I've got hundreds and hundreds of different skirts, you know, for, for different jigs that I could use. But, uh, but that's it. So, like I said, I'll put some, you know, some of the baits, or not so much the baits, but the jig heads, the trailers, some of the stuff from Lure Parts Online, like these, these guys, if you're interested in, uh, in rattles and things like that, and the Power Team, you know, trailer, which is great. The Lake Fork trailer, which is great. They're all good. Um, unfortunately, the Super Pork, <laughs> I can't put you that um, because uh, they don't make those anymore. But Uncle Josh is now making Super Pork again, or not Super Pork, but pork products. And I think that it's kind of come back a little bit. I know they were really expensive when they first came out, but I think I see them a lot on sale now. So maybe those ridiculous prices kind of kept people away, but I have a lifetime supply of Super Pork, so I'm good. But, uh, but that's it. So any questions like on how to do this, if, if, I, if I did anything too fast, you want to see it again, just let me know. Uh, but that's it. So, um, you know, go out, get yourself some components and, and make your own jigs for this efficiency center. All right. So I'll see you guys soon on YouTube. Mark out.